Yes, my friends, there really is yet another all-in-one kit. But this one, it's different than the rest. It's bigger. Much bigger. Look at that. Look at the lens. Look at them thin bezels. All right. So here's here's what the new kit looks like. This is... Um, the vendor is calling it GBP 2.6. They're just the 2.6 inch kit. Um, I'm dubbing them the all-in-one XL kit because the previous version was the all-in-one kit and this is the basically the same kit just with an extra large screen. So I don't know, makes sense to me. Uh, but anyway, thank you for at least two of you folks, sorry I don't remember your names, um, just thinking about it now, didn't even think about it till I started the video. Um, thanks, thanks for letting me know about this kit, believe me, I already had one on the way, but I certainly appreciate you, uh, you letting me know. Um, this particular kit was sent to me from, by Retro Game Repair Shop. I don't know if they're going to be stocking these kits in particular, or at least I don't know if it's going to be a regular thing. I know they had like about 20 or so. Uh, I don't know what they're doing with them, but if they end up on the store, there will be a link in the description. Otherwise, I will throw a link to... I'll throw a link to both. Fuck it. Uh, there will be a link to the AliExpress vendor that makes this kit as well. Uh, this, is the, this is from the Cloud Games store on AliExpress, I believe. Um, I mean, it certainly looks like their, their handiwork and they're currently selling it. So, you know, it's probably theirs. Anyway, so this is what you get with the kit. Uh, it's just the screen, just the PCB, the adapter, and then a little bit of foam and one of these touch sensor maboobs. Uh, but the special thing about this kit is the screen itself. These LCDs are literally brand new. Um, look at the date code on the back. 2020 August 3rd, excuse me. This was made a month ago, just over a month at this point. It's September 14th as of filming this. But in case you're looking at that screen going, oh, it looks like nothing special. It looks like just the old other kits. Well, look at the other kits. Look at how much different, how much different, uh, English is my strong, it's one of my strengths today. Um, look at how much bigger this new screen is. So it should result in a much, much better looking mod. Uh, in fact, I'm going to be replacing one of these kits, not one of these because these are all broken. But I'm going to take this Game Boy and we're going to replace the kit that's in here with one of these fancy things. Um, I don't know if these are going to be coming with lenses. Mine did, but I believe this lens is specifically from a funny playing kit, so I don't know. But either way, you can use a stock lens. You don't have to have a custom lens with these, um, and you certainly don't have to have them thick-ass bezels. So let's check this thing apart. Let's, let's check this thing out and take this thing apart. Now, the vendor is doing something that I don't quite agree with. Uh, I'm sure tons of people are gonna love, but I think it's, I think it's kind of sketch. Um, this kit is a no solder kit in that uh, for the Game Boy Pocket kits, you've always had to solder one wire to the power switch. Um, the original instructions had two wires and I built this when those were the only instructions available. And even during that build, I said, I really don't think you have to do this, but I'm doing it anyway. And, um, well, I wasn't gonna undo it. It wasn't causing any harm. But anyway, the new kit is solderless in that it comes with the wire already soldered to the ribbon cable adapter. And you just get a big long wire that you're supposed to wrap around the battery terminal. And that just, that seems like a recipe for disaster. All right, there it goes. And I always get this comment in my videos. 
So we're gonna we're gonna stub this comment before some wise ass pipes up again. I like clear consoles, alright? I think the aesthetic is 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 neat. I think it's good looking. I especially like that you can see the mods that you install in clear consoles. But want to know my favorite part about the clear consoles? When I install a mod like this in a clear console, I can let everyone else who's watching this video know how much the mod shows when installed in a clear console, in case they do like clear consoles, but don't like that mod aesthetic. Seems like a win-win-win to me, but someone's still going to complain, like usual. All right, so we got to flip this back. <gasps> That's the kid I was looking for. I gotta try one more thing off camera with this. And I forgot to warm up my soldering iron. So now I get to hold this awkwardly while I wait so I can desolder that. come out of here Oink. and you can use the new ribbon if if you're upgrading a console like I am you can use the new ribbon but it's the parts on it are identical so if yours is already soldered down just fucking leave it doesn't matter but we will want to remove this screen Just like normal. Give it a little twisty poo and it'll pop out. Save that for another mod. I'm actually going to pop it in this bag because there's no protective layer on that screen and I'm going to get my grubby little fingerprints all over it otherwise. Take out these spacers, we shouldn't need them anymore. We will also take out this LCD that, is, or lens rather, is conveniently already loose in one corner. Oof. If you're taking out a glass lens, heat. All right, apply heat, like hair dryer, or maybe on a not quite so hot day, Leave it in your car, but supervise it because it gets really fucking hot in your car and that's how you melt Game Boy Pockets, but, you know. I'm definitely not speaking from experience. Okay, and we'll save this too. Don't really know what to do with it though. I'm gonna peel this off. Where's the edge? There it is. And that should preserve the sticky stuff. Enough, at least. All right. So here's what we need to trim. The install is actually super easy. Uh, we don't need any spacers because it's going to fit in the top right corner, I believe. I'll have to double check that. But we do need to trim a little bit on the bottom. As you see, it almost, almost fits. But it looks like everything we need to trim is going to be under the lens. Give me just a moment, I'm gonna double check that. Yep, it looks like I got that right. So I'm just gonna mark this off. A little bit of Sharpie. And I'm just gonna go at it with uh, some flush cutters. Trying to think of how to do this best to capture it on camera so we can both see. If you have a Dremel, by all means. Oh shit. Eh. 
and eh, it could be better, but, but, there's always a but, um, all that should be under the lens. I did fuck up just a hair where I tried to cut too deep with the uh, flush cutters, but I'm going to try and hide my crime. Brilliant. Now you can't even see that I've tried cutting something I wasn't supposed to cut. I'm going to leave the film on for now, but now would be when you peel it off. Look at that. Look at that. It's beautiful. Interestingly, I can't wrap my wire in the same place. I have to route it up and I'll have to cut a channel on this plastic here. Pop it right there. LED should squeeze by with little trouble. It's a VO2. I already tested VO2. That didn't work. Okay, never mind. As far as connecting this up goes. Do this whole number here. Wrap around. Oh shit. I wasn't paying attention at all. This goes the other way now. Ah, oh, fuck. That's positioned so nicely. I don't want to move it. I got it right the first try, and that's rare for me. <laughs> That is one of the differences between this PCB and this one. The uh, sensor, you notice, is on the other side. Oh, I will say what's interesting is this doesn't appear to have button controls like this one does. I mean, I never actually wired them up, but you have these two pads here you can solder to buttons to control it that way. Trying to think of how I want to do this. Is that C13? No, that's something else. This also doesn't appear to have that uh, that brightness jumper. If you want a brighter screen, not really that big of a deal in my opinion because it really wasn't that bright to begin with, and it didn't get much brighter. Hmm. Well, I suppose I could just solder on a jumper wire. That's totally ridiculous. Okay. What if we just fold this? That looks ridiculous. And it's not long enough. Oh, I'm going to have to turn it around. I should have checked that before pressing it down. That would have been the smart thing to do, huh? Ah, uh, good enough. Not perfect. But I'm taking this thing apart again because... There. No notch needed. I just have to solder it to C13.
Yeah, I was gonna say that's a sketchy joint. This kit doesn't have a uh, dedicated pad to solder to, it just has that, um, that flat flex connector and then an empty resi uh, capacitor pad and you solder it to the capacitor pad instead if you want to use your own touch sensor. But because this kit is wink wink nudge nudge solderless. They don't even give you the option, apparently, which I think is dumb as fuck. That got really hot. I had my finger right under where I was soldering. In case you weren't perfectly aware, um, 299 degrees Celsius is hot. Okay. We'll go there. We just need to plug things back in now. Oh, come on. How am I... You know what? You know what? This is the problem. Do it right the first time, and you won't have to do it three times. Funny how that works. Just to prove it works with a stock lens. There's one of the crusty ones that I've been saving for something. I don't know. And uh, let's see what the power is like. I have my fancy new power supply here set to 2.4 volts. And I know it's kind of small, but it's right there. Turn it on. And right under the yellow text, the yellow text is volts, right under the yellow text is blue amps. Let's see what it pulls. So 150 milliamps spikes. That's uh alright, alright. And this touch sensor. I don't know. Let me put a game in. Huh. 
zoom out a little for the power consumption, then I'll zoom in for the uh, flickering and whatnot. The uh, scrolling bars tests. I mean, it looks pretty darn good so far. If it's dropping frames or tearing or anything, I'm not. It's not immediately apparent to me. So how this is supposed to work is if you hold it, it'll change palettes, and if you tap it, it'll change brightness. How it's actually working is a little bit different. Now it could be that I have to use this shitty little touch sensor. I hate these stupid things. It's not working well for me. Um, for comparison purposes, let me run this on my old power supply because I forgot to do a before and after. But if I do it with this power supply, I can just look up my old numbers. Oops. Usually test at two point four. Yeah, that's basically what my other meter was showing. and then all the way up back again to 160, 170. Oh, now 168 we'll call it. Looks like each step is about 4 to 5 milliamps at 2.4 volts. Then if we press and hold, Pallets. It's all right. Nothing special. I don't really like it. I think other kits do do it better. Uh, is there a... No. I, I was just... For some reason I, I couldn't remember if there was a pixel grid on this kit. That pixel grid emulation, but... I know the specs of this LCD and there just simply aren't enough pixels for that. Uh, let me find... I need to go find a flash cart. All right, so we're testing with the EverDrive today because that's what I could find. Oh, that's promising, isn't it? So, I'm just gonna bump it up to three volts for the purpose of the test.
Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? Ugh. I see the flash cart compatibility is excellent. It's still perfect. This is why we love Game Boy Pockets and modding the piss out of them. Yeah, this can put out a lot more. That's why I like it. Uh, let's try scrolling bars with reset test. Bring that in. And remember, usual usual spiel here. When the S in scrolling passes the left hand side of the screen. The game is issuing an LCD reset command, which usually, well, always results in a dropped frame, even on OEM Game Boy screens. Um, most backlight kits at this point are handling it pretty well, but for a while there were uh, there were some real doozies out there. Um, not to name and shame, it's for another video, but. I'm just saying this is looking good. I don't see any screen tearing. I don't see any frame dropping other than that reset. So, look, looks good to me. I'm going to pull up the gradient test here. So we can check out the color palettes. Now in person, the contrast between these two colors is a lot better than it looks on screen. But I will agree that it could be better. Come on. That's interesting. Stop it, you. Oh, I accidentally hit it. Um, hot dogs? I guess. Hot dog stand. And then back to gray again. So yeah, there's really not that many color palettes and the ones that do exist aren't great, but you know, the screen itself is, this is looking good. I'm really stoked for what's next with these kits. Um, the most exciting thing is that the uh, high vision kit maker seems to have finally fixed their bullshit um, frame dropping issue. Hopefully, I'm not speaking too soon. Let's pull up one more, one more test. Maybe. Probably froze. Uh, I don't know. It's looking good. I'm. Doked out of my mind for the Game Boy Color Kit. If it's as good as this, it's whew, it's gonna be good. Um, from it. What was I looking for? Oh yeah, I want to see the regular scrolling bars test. This one doesn't have a screen reset, so I just want to double check there's no dropping or tearing or stuttering or other weird shit. And yeah, that looks pretty darn good. Very nice. So yeah, I... I hate to say it because I feel like this happens every single time there's a new kit. It's like... 
Every every time there's a new kit, it's like, oh no, this one's actually the best. You should get this one. This one's actually the best. You should get this one. I'm gonna have to play with this one some more to really see um, what's going on. You know, if it's any good. I have a a few videos planned working on power mods for the Game Boy Pocket because. I mean, you saw how much trouble I had just booting it off of my other power supply with an EverDrive and this backlight kit. Um, so that'll hopefully at least mitigate some of these issues. Uh, but yeah, this is looking good. The install, stupid easy. The performance, fucking mint. Um, the only real thing is it doesn't quite have that um, that that pow that the funny playing kit has and it doesn't have oh no what a nightmare it doesn't have the uh, pixel grid emulation but since I never really cared for that feature in the first place I don't really give a shit but you know if you're looking for it it's worth considering uh, just for comparison purposes though Here's the funny playing kit. And you can see, you know, the funny playing kit is quite a bit brighter and it's not even at max brightness. Now it is. This isn't at max brightness either, but it doesn't get that much brighter, I think. I can't even get the touch sensor working at all now. It's got to be something with my wire routing. Like it's. Maybe it's too close to the screen. I'll have to play with that some more. But I didn't finish this install quite yet because I do want to see about making a bracket to make this install a just just a hair easier. I mean, it's already stupid easy. Um, easy, way easier than this one was anyway. It sticks out just about the same. A little less, actually. But, I mean, it's still, it's the same aesthetic, really. On the top, there is more noticeable. Especially because you have that big ribbon there. But, I don't know. It's, uh, it's pretty good. I'm pretty stoked. But if you want this pixel grid, you only have one choice at the moment. I, I don't like it. I, it's not. Don't. Don't don't get anything for the pixel grid. Uh, but yeah, I'm just rambling now, so I think I need to end this video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Uh, like I said, I do have quite a few videos planned, um, especially for the pocket in particular. Uh, gonna work on fixing or improving the install, I guess, making it as easy as possible. Um, try and work on that power issue so that we can actually get these stupid things booting off of batteries with a backlight kit and a flash cart, because otherwise just not having a good time. Um, you know what? Let's try it out. I'm sorry. Let me just just one more thing, just one more thing, just one more thing. But I, I think this is a good test. I don't know how charged these batteries are, but it shouldn't matter because unless your Game Boy, you're putting in fresh batteries every single time you play your Game Boy. It's looping. Will it go on the second try? It went on the second try. Okay, so maybe that's not so bad. My power light is awful dim, though. Alright, so, yeah, it's not so bad. I think I had more issues with the funny playing kit in particular, and especially with the easy flash that I just found. So of course, let's test that. <laughs> uh, 
Jesus. It reset before it even got through that loop there. Yeah. That's, uh... It's wonderful, isn't it? Oh, and for those wondering, this contrast wheel does nothing on this mod. So that's another uh, pro for the funny playing kit, I guess. You have analog brightness control in the form of an actual tactile thing. Whereas on this kit, you just have this contrast wheel that does absolutely nothing. They all have their own caveats, you know. But anyway, yeah, that's where we're at. I guess I'll catch you guys next time with, uh, with something. I don't know. Thanks again to Retro Game Repair Shop. Super cool sending me this kit. Um, God, I just keep going, don't I? Just, when does this fucker ever shut up? Uh, check out the description. There's links there. Um, bye.